Embry Oliver, a child who is abandoned by her parents, keeps a dark secret about having flesh-eating monsters trapped in her basement. With her parents seemingly having fallen victim to them, with Embry not being too sure, waiting in the cursed house for them to come back. The townsfolk starting to get worried about her due to her poor visible condition, they introduce a competent and well-known doctor to her, which changes the course of the story. Hi folks, I'm R, your narrator. Welcome to It's Not Me, It's My Basement, which has a very interpretive story. Big news, by the way. I recently created a subreddit where you can share your theories and interpretation of game stories with the community, which would also help a lot when trying to write scripts for the upcoming videos. You could also get a shout out in those videos. Anyway, keep in mind, as always, this video will have spoilers. And with that said, let's begin. Embry, a young girl, wakes up in her bedroom, planning to make breakfast. As she goes down, she notes how the artificial plants in the house would have been long dead if they were real, which clearly suggests that the residents in the house do not attend them seemingly being busy or unavailable. Going to the kitchen to prepare some food, she observes her drawing of herself and parents signed by herself using her initials, which read as EGO or EGO. Embry proceeds to make a peanut butter jelly sandwich, explaining that she's running out of groceries, which she needs to go to the market for, but first, she must feed them, referring to certain entities. As she goes to the living room, the morbid scene of how she has chained the door to the basement comes to sight, revealing how certain entities are trapped there. The incomplete drawing on the floor reveals how Embry doesn't have enough time to draw anymore, accompanied by her dirty stained clothes, which show that she has been busy trying to feed the entities in the basement, not having enough time to do anything else. Looking at the TV and the VHS player, Embry mentions how her father used to rewind the tapes with her not knowing how to do it, which shows that her father hasn't been home for a long time. Embry quickly opens the chains and the door, dropping the food down the basement stairs and quickly shutting the door, asking the entities within the basement to share the food between each other. That's when loud growls are heard shaking the house, causing Embry to shiver in fear. She quickly goes out, taking a grocery list she made, intending to go to the market. The dilapidated state of the front garden, with stale muddy water and broken swing, displays how Embry has been alone in the house without her parents present to attend to anything. Going through a long, dark, bushy path, Embry finally manages to arrive at the market, going to a food stall that sells meat. The stall attendant, called Miss Baylor, informs Embry that she doesn't have any stock of meat again, with it being fully bought out. Embry thinks to herself that it's something she desperately requires, which she made three different trips in the past in order to get some, which portrays whatever entities or monsters Embry keeps in the basement require meat most of all, in order to be kept satiated and satisfied. Next all she visits is where jams and fruit conserves are sold, with the attendant being called Lucille. Lucille mentions how it's been the third week in a row Embry has visited the market dressed in the same attire, being stained and dirty, to which Embry explains it's because her parents have been sick for a while. This seems to be a lie Emery has been telling the community in order for them not to inquire further to where her parents are and not to investigate her house, finding a monster in the basement. Talking to another stall owner called Mr. Wilson, he shows concerns to Emery's condition, pressing the issue by trying to invite himself and family into her house for a dinner, to which Emery mentions that her parents are embarrassed as they are very sick at the current time. Despite Embry's excuse, her appearance and parents' absence for over three weeks should have already risen some major concerns, forcing the local community to investigate her house, but it seems that the community's concerns are only superficial, with no one intending to get involved, hence why everyone in the market is faceless, displaying to be unimportant and uninvolved characters that don't play a major role in Embry's story. That is also true on how Embry might see them, people who are distant and not important in her life. Embry gets back home and feeds the monsters in her basement, finally going to bed, 
putting all the stress to rest. While sleeping, she dreams of her mother, how loving and caring she used to be, spending time with her while gardening, explaining how important it is to care for a flower while gardening it. She continues how without a constant eye and care, it is easy for the flower to wilt and die, making a garden fall apart when every stream changes into a horrifying nightmare of her mother being decapitated. This appears to act as a metaphor to how Embry's lack of attention could have been a direct result of the monsters appearing in her basement. That's when Embry jumps out of her sleep to the sound of loud bangs being heard from the basement door. Rushing down, she notices that the monsters are hungry, seemingly wanting more food. Being left with the difficult choice to whether use the ration of food and feed the monsters or keep it until tomorrow, Emery decides to think for long term and let them stay hungry. Going back to bed, Emery wakes up the next morning with deep eye bags as usual, displaying how she barely sleeps due to the presence of monsters in her basement that require constant care and maintenance so that they don't break the chains and consume her. As she goes to the kitchen to prepare breakfast for the monsters, she marks the calendar, keeping time for how long it's been since the monsters appeared. She explains how it's been four months since she heard the monsters seemingly eating her parents, but being unsure if they're actually dead, hence why she stays at home, keeping it as clean as she can so maybe one day her parents would return. She further explains she feeds the monsters in order to keep them satiated not to eat her. She locked them in the basement, too afraid to check what they actually look like, with not many specifics on how her parents disappeared. She doesn't know whether they were in the basement when she heard the monsters eat them, in the house or outside, and she doesn't explain how the monsters ended up in the basement. Most likely scenario is that the parents were in the basement when she heard them being eaten, not actually seeing it happen happen when she quickly chained up the door, locking whatever monsters ate them downstairs. But something that causes some confusion is why she said that she's waiting for her parents to return. It's not that they went far if they are in the basement. What is it exactly that she means by hoping that one day they would come back? As Embry occupies herself with housework and reading a book, she hears bangs on the door again, not being their normal eating time, when Embry hears a horrifying sound coming from downstairs, mimicking her mother's voice. The voice urges Embry to open the door, manipulating her by acting like her mother, which depicts whatever monsters are downstairs, are quite intelligent and competent in their ways of luring their victims, even able to mimic familiar sounds to psychologically control people. As Embry shouts that the monster is not her mother, the other monster mimics her father's voice, demanding Embry to open the door. Embry insists and explains her father would never speak that way. To Embry's shock, she hears another voice echoing through the door sounding exactly like herself. The mimic explains that it's tired living like this, being trapped in the basement, and it further explains that it knows Embry herself is tired of this life and she should let the mimic out. The monstrous mimic then continues that it knows Embry refers to them as monsters, which causes the monster to be surprised why they're being treated that way, when the mimic mentions something very shocking to why Embry hates herself like that, as if Embry herself is one of them or the monsters are the representation of Embry. Confused to what the mimic is saying, she confronts it by saying that she's keeping them fed and what else they want when the monster starts shouting that they want to be out. That's when Embry can't take it anymore, rushing outside, wanting to have some fresh air. As a result, she tries to repeatedly calm herself by saying everything is okay, something that she will continuously tell herself in the span of the story. As she's outside, she tries to think critically of what to do, thinking her options are limited to whether starving them or feeding them. As she evaluates the options, she explains starving them could lead to them eating Embry and taking over, while feeding them could make them stronger and smarter, which causes Embry to stop thinking, avoiding the confrontation with herself, just continuing to do what she does. 
This depicts how Emery is nurturing the problem rather than confronting it and finding a solution, which in a way could play as a metaphor to a bigger problem. With the monsters maybe only existing in her head, only getting stronger and overpowering the more she tries to ignore them. Emery after some time goes back home and feeds the monsters for dinner and eventually heads back to bed. While asleep, she dreams of her father who used to teach her how to paint, when he mentions something very symbolic of how it's important to know exactly what it is that she wants to paint before starting, as it might although be true, if mistakes happen they can be corrected by drawing over them, but this can be true so many times before the painting is completely ruined. Suddenly, a horrifying flash reveals that her father has vanished, with his painting being of a large monster, while Embrys is of a person cowering from the monster. The father's message about correcting mistakes by just covering them up symbolizes Embry's situation on how she tries to avoid her problem of having monsters instead of facing them and solving it. Hence why just saying everything will be okay and ignoring the problem only makes it worse. Embry soon wakes up in the morning planning to go to the market hoping that they have meat this time as it seems to be the only type of food that keeps the monsters the fullest. After feeding the monsters breakfast, Emery goes to the market paying Miss Baylor a visit in hopes of getting meat. She informs Embry that she's exceptionally happy today as a very well-known traveling doctor has visited their town who can potentially help Embry's parents with their sickness, especially as Embry has been refusing to allow any doctors in, dismissing them as incompetent. As Embry is pressured into talking with the doctor, he introduces himself as Dr. Delight, not falling short of the name, as the doctor indeed is very delightful and expressive. He also rocks an impressive outfit with an expressive face mask, having a large smile, which changes depending on how the doctor feels. This shows how the doctor is the only one from the crowd who has a face associated with him, depicting how his character plays an important role in Embry's life. Dr. Delight subsequently asks Embry to lead the way back to her house in order for him to see her parents and possibly treat them. While walking through the wooded and long path, the doctor voices his concerns on how Embry walks all alone through this forest, as it could prove to be dangerous. He further continues asking why she has an apron with red stains on them, asking if she's a painter, to which she explains that she doesn't paint anymore, in fact, not doing much of anything anymore. Worried about Embry, the doctor tries to reassure her by promising her that he will do anything in his power to treat her parents so that she can have a normal life again, being a child than a caretaker. That's when Embry breaks her silence, saying that he cannot help her, and as a matter of fact, no one can, putting all the weight of stress on herself, even though she could easily inform the crowd about the monsters and be transparent so that they could actually help. This in a way suggests that her problem with the monsters is deeper than portrayed, something that has made her feel alone. After one last warning from Embry, they both enter the house, with Embry showing the doctor around. As he tries to enter the parents' room, Embry mentions that they're not there, which confuses the doctor who doesn't ask any more questions due to Embry's cold and distant nature. They eventually come across the basement door, which Embry tries to dissuade the doctor from asking about or entering. The doctor being persistent, thinking the parents are locked there, insists that she should open it. That's when Embry notices that she doesn't have the key to the basement, thinking she could have dropped it in the market. Before leaving the house, the doctor urges her to look around the house so maybe they can find it somewhere inside. As Embry looks around, she is surprised to find the key inside her toy box, as she mentions she never puts it there and doesn't remember it at all, especially as she hasn't been using her toy box for a very long time. As they both go down, Emery opens the door reluctantly, which reveals how dark and deep the basement goes with a long flight of stairs. The doctor suggests they should both go down, which mortifies Emery, saying that she never agreed to go down, only agreeing to open the door, when the doctor keeps insisting, which results in Emery becoming tense, trying to stop the doctor, which eventually leads to him tripping and falling down the stairs. Emery, horrified to this accident, quickly 
shuts the door, with growls being heard when a pool of blood starts pouring through the door gap, suggesting that the doctor was savagely ripped apart by the monsters. Embry, as a result, bursting into tears, saying everything is okay, ignoring this tragedy, makes her way back to her bed. As she's deep asleep, she hears a loud bang which makes her jump out of bed, which she goes down to check the basement door, when in horror, she comes across the basement door being wide open, being sure that she locked it and that there's no possible way it could be open, with no sign of it being broken. Being confronted with two options, whether to go down the basement and face her monsters, or go back to bed and ignore the problem by just saying everything will be fine, she stands still, numb and clueless to what choice she should take. If Embry decides to go back to bed and just ignore her concerning problems, she mentions how everything will be okay, shutting her bedroom door behind her. As she checks under her bed, a monstrous tentacle formation peeks through her toy box before going back, with Embry being completely oblivious to its presence. As she goes to sleep, she dreams of Dr. Delight, whose face mask is slipping with a monstrous mutilated face hiding behind. The doctor goes on explaining how all he wanted to do was to help, being unable to do so as Embry didn't want to open up about her problems. He continues that Embry's silence in seeking help is not because she's helpless, but it's because she knows when she gets help, there's no longer any excuse as to why she still has the problem. Therefore, this portrays that whatever Embry is hiding is her own inner monster represented in physical, real demonic beings. She would either accidentally or intentionally push the doctor down the stairs, with her seeing his death as her monsters being the culprits, so that her excuse stays valid and she she doesn't have to face her monsters, with everything she ever wanting to do is saying that everything is okay and ignore the problems. She suddenly awakens, realizing that if she doesn't confront her demons, this will go on forever with more people dying, which makes her make the difficult decision to finally face her demons going down to the basement. If Emery makes the decision to go down to the basement after the doctor falls down, she goes deep into a rabbit hole, a basement which feels like a maze filled with boxes. At the end of the basement, she encounters a clone of herself, identical to how she looks and dresses, with nothing else such as large monstrous beings present. The clone, being referred to as You Are, goes on to explain that she is the same as Embry, she is her representation, and that there are no monsters, it's just Embry. Embry just created that thought to avoid calling herself a monster, despite just having caused the doctor fall down into the basement. The clone goes on saying that if Embry wasn't such a monster, the doctor wouldn't have even needed to visit the house, implying that the death of her parents, the excuse of their sickness, all of that is the lie Embry has created to hide her true nature. The clone continues that Embry feeds her not because she has to, but because she likes to, with keeping the monster fed, making Embry feel safe, even though there's nothing coming to hurt her. The clone then finishes by explaining despite being fed so much, she still remains hungry when Embry jumps out of sleep. She correspondingly makes the same decision and goes down the basement to face her fears and monsters. Now the question remains, what actually happened? Was it all in Embry's head or did the monsters actually exist? My personal theory is that the monsters were actually the representation of Embry's repressed fantasies. It's possible that Embry had a dark fascination with death and killing, which transpired her alter ego, which is pointed out to in different parts of the story. The drawing on the fridge spells the word ego, which is of Embry's initials. The final face of with a clone reveals that the monster is actually herself, with her enjoying to feed the monster even though she doesn't need to. She also finds the key to her basement in her toy box, something she doesn't remember. The very same toy box also depicts how a tentacled monster resides within it, which could be a depiction of Embry's darker side who takes control of her. Throughout the game, Embry decides to nurture her monsters than confronting them, saying everything is fine. She avoids seeking help, knowing too well it's just an excuse that she's helpless. She in fact enables the monsters to take control and become even stronger. 
It's all because Embry doesn't want to face and confront her inner demons. The monsters at one point mimic Embry's voice and her parents, even seemingly appearing in the doctor's form, which reveals that the monsters are represented in Embry's victim's shape, including herself, as Embry has enabled her dark side to take over, rendering herself a victim of her own doing. It's hinted out that Embry's parents were the first ones who were killed by her, hence why she doesn't want to seek help, knowing full well it would end up with her being admitted to a psych ward or simply, Embry doesn't want to face her darker side. She also mentions that she doesn't remember what happened to them, just hearing monsters eat them with no other specifics, which again reveals that she simply doesn't want to remember and enables the monsters within her. There are many more clues linking the dots that Emery's monsters are a figment of her imagination, that they are the representation of her monstrous side enjoying the death of her victims. It's a possibility that she even mutilated her victims, with the first ones being her parents, with a flash of her mother's dream showing how she had lost her head, and the doctor being revealed to have a mutilated face when the face mask was slipping. The game is full of symbolisms and little hints and clues which could take another whole video just to cover. So we are just going to leave it right here, at least for now. If you enjoyed the video, you can stay tuned for more by hitting on the subscribe button and the notification bell. If you also have any cool game suggestions, you can DM me or tag me on my Twitter. It's been your host, Star, and I will see you on the next one. Take care.